You may be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome, everyone, to the service celebration for Jeanette Haynes. I'm Reverend Andrew Morris. I'm the senior pastor here at Hillcrest Church, and uh, I had the privilege of working with Jeanette over the last seven years here that I've been here, uh, ministering in different ways alongside her. And you know, to be honest, I'm wrecked. <laughs> I just miss her so bad. She's been a friend. She's been a teammate co-conspirator we have done some hijinks as someone said earlier she's been a ministry partner a prayer partner a book giver i swear half the books on the shelf in my office are from her <laughs> she's been a snack deliverer a smile bearer and someone i love to tease her desire to serve and her commitment to christ was such an inspiration not only to me but to many if not all of you here this morning so thank you for gathering here today to celebrate Jeanette's life. You know, we also gather not just to celebrate, but to mourn together, to grieve together, and to celebrate together, to comfort one another. And you know, we mourn because we loved her. I like, I use this saying because it means so much to me. We get no choice. If we love, we grieve. And man, we loved Jeanette. And though we grieve, we are able to celebrate because of how she impacted our lives. We have someone absolutely incredible to celebrate. And we've gathered to remind ourselves of the eternal hope that she has and that she is with her loving Savior, Jesus Christ. And we encourage ourselves in that according to our faith in Christ, we will see Jeanette again. Today, we find real comfort in the gift she gave us, the gift of her faith. We know scripture tells us that to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord, we know her soul is safe alongside her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even now. But we miss her. I'm going to miss her being around here. I'm going to miss her presence in the office, you know, giving her calls. I'm with Kathy receiving calls from her. Um, I think a lot of us would love to have a little extra time with her. Maybe Elizabeth maybe wouldn't want to drive around so much anymore, but, you know, nothing's going to be quite the same, is it? I'd just like to take a few moments to remember Jeanette's sister Elizabeth, her stepsister Celine and Hazel, stepbrother Charles, and nieces and nephews that are here lined up in the front. And I like to put in the obituary her host of friends. There's a lot of us that consider her our friends, and we've all gathered here today. Not one of us would keep Jeanette from her rewards in heaven, but we always would like a little more time, wouldn't we? So thank you, friends and family. I appreciate the honor and the privilege of serving you here this morning uh, to celebrate and to lead this celebration ceremony uh, on her behalf. And I, I did not know it was going to be in the back of the bulletin, but I love that poem that's there. And it just puts things in the right perspective. I love that poem. It says, A ship sails, and I stand watching till she fades in the horizon. And someone at my side says, She's gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that's all. She is just as large now as when I last saw her. Her diminished size and total loss from my sight is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone at my side says, She's gone. There are others who are watching her coming over their horizon. And other voice, voices take up a glad shout, Here she comes! Here she comes. And that's what dying is. It's a horizon and just the limit of our sight. So lift us up, O oh Lord, that we might see further. We will see Jeanette again, and it will be awesome. And she'll be one of the ones that say, Here you come! She'll be greeting you. But don't be surprised. She says, here you come. Choir practice at 7 o'clock. Be there on time. <laughs> you're going to be singing with the angels. And you've got about two hours to get yourself settled here. We're going to practice. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so as we sing our first congregational hymn, when we all get to heaven, just recognize this is a choir practice for when Jeanette sees us again and welcomes 
us into her angelic hosts of choirs. So if you turn your hymn book, we're not going to put anything on the screen. We're going to do this Jeanette style. Hymn number 123. You guys want the hymn books in the front pews? Oh my goodness. Well, give us just a moment and we will rectify that. I'll keep one for me. Joke's on me. So, a tech team, uh, we're going to go, I don't, I presume you have it on there, number 123, which is when we all get to heaven. They're going to get that for us. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll do a solo with Christopher, and let's stand. <laughs> and we're just going to go ahead, when we all get to heaven, number 123. Let's stay standing. Jeanette, of course, if you knew, had a bit of an Anglican background. And so in your bulletin should be the Apostles' Creed. And we're going to read that together. Baptist Church is always stealing the best Anglicans. You know, that's what we do. Let's read the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again 
to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Some of you may be wondering, why is our Presbyterian minister at the pulpit of a Baptist church? (laughs) And I often tease people and I say, well, often the reason why we don't get a lot more Presbyterians in our church is because they can't spell Presbyterian. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was a pleasure and wonderful for me to be with Jeanette as we ministered together for four years in nursing homes. I got to know Jeanette very, very well, and we spent a fair amount of time together, not in one nursing home at Carlton Kirk, but also in Turnbull Home at Loch Lomond Villa. And people were always looking forward, not to me, but to see Jeanette again. Jeanette loved the people. They knew her. They knew the love that she poured out for them. Even when I saw her last Monday, Before I left her, I knew she was getting tired, and I said, Jeanette, can we have a word of prayer before I leave? And so Jeanette took my hand, and I held on to hers, and as I concluded my prayer, she would not let go of mine, because she wanted to pray as well. She prayed for the church, for the church in the world. She prayed for every one of the nursing homes that were there. She prayed for my wife, Dorothy, and I, for the ministry we do. She had very strong faith, and I knew even at that point that she was ready to go home. And God has blessed us through her. Jeanette has touched the life of Dorothy and I. I can tell you that my wife, Dorothy, was very shy, and she wouldn't sing alone. Dorothy was brought out of her shell because that forced her out. (laughs) And even Dorothy sang here when we had senior services. And I was so pleased that Jeanette did that for us. What a wonderful gift she has been. Jeanette informed me, in fact, I had one service at Loch Lomond Villa uh, that we had there together, and I chose a passage to have for my evening service. And when I read that, and I I spoke about that, Jeanette said to me on the way home in the car, I want you to read this passage at my funeral. I just took it lightly, but I knew. And when I read this, you will understand. This passage was so, so meaningful. Because now whenever I read this, I will always, always remember Jeanette. Let us hear the word of God as it is recorded in 1 John chapter 4, as I begin to read at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent a Son to be the appropriation for our sins. Beloved, If God so loved us, we also are to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. And by this, we know that we abide in him and he in us 
because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love of God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because... He first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Eric. I couldn't help but notice when we came in and we realized that there weren't enough books. We don't use books a lot anymore, <laughs> hymnals. Uh, but it took two of our former young people of the church Alan and Colleen to go get them. They knew where they were hidden, as well as Mary and uh, Emily, the funeral director. So thanks for bringing the extra books in. They didn't know they were going to be pressed into service when they came this morning. The purpose now of our time of remembrance is, first of all, uh, I have a few messages to read. And then there will be a few minutes where we will open up the mic for anybody who... Uh, may wish to extend their thoughts about Jeanette and their, uh, Jeanette's impact upon them. And then I have a more formal eulogy to give after that. First of all, um, there's a, a letter uh, here that Jeanette received from um, a lady that did her hair uh, for a period of time by the name of Trish, I believe. Yes, Trish. And... Uh, this one is dated, uh, I'll only read portions of it, dated December the 1st, 2019. She said, my dear friend, I am extremely blessed to know you, and I feel very lucky that you came into the salon that I was working to get your hair done. Who would have thought that I would make such a wonderful friend? Everyone gets to meet people that change their life in a way, whether small or big, and you have changed my life. You have taught me to be a better person and a friend. Um, you were always so encouraging and positive. You are complimenting uh, and supportive. You have lived your life in a way that most people would envy. And she goes on to say, um, thank you for including me in your phone calls to friends. I am so touched. You truly made me feel loved and special. And then in another place, a little bit later, uh, January the 20th, Trish wrote, I wish I were closer to spend time with you, Jeanette. I am there in spirit. You are in my thoughts and prayers. I am very blessed to have you in my life. You are very loved. And then um, I have here some words from, they're here somewhere, from the uh, pastor 
No, it's from, sorry, uh, Bill. Some of you remember Bill Powell and, and Ellen that were our pastors here. Well, Ellen Powell sent a message through. We called Ellen when Jeanette passed away. So Ellen says this, Dear family and friends of Jeanette Haynes, we share your grief and send our deepest love and sympathy to you all the pa on the passing of our dear Jeanette into glory. You are being upheld in prayer even now during this very service. What a joy to have had Jeanette as a special friend for 29 years. The eight years Pastor Bill and I served with you at Hillcrest Baptist Church were a blessing and a privilege. Jeanette had such a major part in that ministry through her music, playing the organ and directing the choir in countless services, funerals, nursing homes, the mall at Christmas time, and much more. I learned so much while singing in the choir under her directing. Toward the end of her life, she expressed to me her deep appreciation for her family, taking her in and caring for her. That meant so very much to her. Thank you, family. She updated me through the progression of her illness at all the time, evidencing a real peace and assurance of soon being with the Lord. During our last phone call, I played some Christmas music recorded by the combined choirs from Moody Bible Institute singing 10,000 Joys, a song our Hillcrest Choir sung many years ago. She was delighted and so grateful. We ended our call uh, talking about heaven, praying for each other, and exchanging I love yous. May God continue to bless, guide, comfort, and give each of you his peace found only in Jesus. With love and prayers, Ellen Powell and family. I also have here um, a statement that I extracted from a Facebook posting from one of our former pastors, Reverend Lane Daggett. He said this, The greater the love, the greater the loss. What a wonderful, patient, kind musician she was, and what a profound impact she had in so many of our lives. I was blessed to have been her pastor and co-minister for seven years, and I am a better person because her life enriched ours. How I loved doing the narrations in her musicals several times a year. She has joined the heavenly choir leading musical tributes to the Lord she loves. Those are the messages I have. Now we're going to open up the mic for a few minutes for anyone who has some brief remem remembrances of Jeanette. Um, my wife Barbara w was going to have one, but she ended up getting ill, and she's not here this morning. She, uh, I know she would miss this very much, but um, she just could not be here this morning. But I did find um, some notes that she had made just before I left uh, our apartment, and uh, she had made some notes about Jeanette, and the last thing she noted was that she was a true friend, and the friend was in big capital letters. Those of you that know Barb know she writes now in little tiny, tiny letters. This was like that, <laughs> friend. So that was her remembrance of Jeanette, but also choir and directing and all of that. All right, if there's anyone who would like to come forward at this point, please do so and bring your remembrances. I know there's one or two, I think. Sean, okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Boss, and uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to come up and say a few words about my friend Jeanette and our friend. A lot of words so far have been said, and all of them I agree. There's been a lot of descriptions that have been said about Jeanette that I can uh, testify are true. 
when I think about Jeanette, um, I'm very thankful to be able to say that she's been a friend of mine for a very long time. Uh, something that is concerning to me because I'm getting older quickly, but <laughs> she's, uh, she is one of the individuals in my life that I can say uh, has known me uh, since the day Christ saved me. I got saved in this church by the grace of God about 23 years ago, and um, she's been a very good friend to both myself and my wife. Uh, my wife is here, Krista, and she be able to say the same thing that she has been a dear friend to Krista uh, for as long as she has had a relationship with the Lord as well and, and I found it interesting and encouraging to to hear a letter uh, read um, from someone who used to do her hair in, in the life that Jeanette touched my wife um, has also had the privilege of doing Jeanette's hair in the later years and uh, sharing the conversations <clears throat> that Jeanette shared um, she she was an absolute friend. I like the way Sterling had said that, um, because that is who she was to everyone. That is who she strived to be for everyone. My earliest recollections of Jeanette go so far back that um, I have to recall um, an instrument that used to be in a place right over there for anyone who hasn't been to this church uh, before or a long time. There used to be an organ there, and that was, that was Jeanette's place in this church and where she served the Lord from um, and, and where she uh, spent many times encouraging me. I, I can't think of any one time in particular because there had been various times where Jeanette would speak into my life whether I was struggling through something or, or she just seemed to have that sense to know what to say or that encouragement was needed and and she always received hugs um, I'm a hugger not everybody is <laughs> and uh, I've learned to understand that and almost kind of look for the cue but when it came to Jeanette um, she 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 was looking for those hugs she was a, a a very loving person and getting an embrace from Jeanette was just such a an encouragement to me as well as it was to my wife and and as I got thinking about the life of Jeanette and um, and who she she reminded me of. I often like to think of individuals um, who have impacted my life um, from uh, the perspective of faith. I like to think of who they remind me of um, from people in the Bible. And uh, a couple of them uh, immediately came to mind when I thought about Jeanette. The first was the um, the first was a man named Barnabas. Uh, um, he was known as an encourager. And uh, when I think about Jeanette, that is one of the things that come to mind because she was such an encourager to so many people. She, she always knew how, what to say, how to say it, and how to finish it with a word from the Lord and a warm embrace. And the second person that um, came to mind uh, was the Apostle Paul. And the reason why the Apostle Paul came to mind when I thought about Jeanette was because of the Apostle Paul's passion for the church. Paul had a passion for the church. He had a, he had a passion for the for the people of the church, um, the believers in the church, and she had a passion for those who didn't know Lord know the Lord. And and it was her hope that they would come into her saving relationship with the Lord and be a part of the eternal family. Um, I seen that passion in Jeanette uh, over the over the past year I'd say in particular Jeanette and I have had the opportunity to converse at different times. My wife and I had the chance to visit her when Krista was able to do her hair last and, and even in early phone conversations that was always the sediments that were in Jeanette's heart was about the church and in particular this church and all that was taking place in this church and the hope she had for this church. Um, uh, that is where Jeanette's heart and passion was. It was always on Christ and the furtherance of his kingdom and for those who desperately needed to hear the gospel message. Um, there is a section of scripture that I would read as I finish um, that I do pray encourages you because um, it has me thinking about Jeanette and, and her passion for those um, who belong to the church. Uh, it is found in Colossians chapter 2 and it, it reads, I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My purpose, and I think of this when I read, I think of Jeanette when I read this, my purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, a theme we've heard about already today, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. 
That was Jeanette's passion, and I'm thankful that that passion has touched my life, my wife's life, and so many others, and I will greatly miss her, but I look forward to seeing my friend again one day when my time comes to go home with the Lord. God bless. Is there someone else? All right. Wanda's coming. Okay. Mary, just you got to use the microphone. I'll give you a bit of history. I remember Jim before she ever came into this church. And she was two weeks in Charlotte Street Church. Now you take a look at me and you ask yourself, well, how you all have two lives. And the first one was your mother had you when you were born. And the second one is when you became a Christian. So you ask yourself, what day you were baptized and what day you joined the church, whether you're Anglican, Presbyterian, or Baptist. And figure out how many years you've been sitting, standing on, the, on this road in life with your life. But I remember quite, most of the thought that I have from Jeanette's life is she would stand here on the choir in the center of the floor and direct being big loser of a choir behind me. And I thank God for her life and ministry that she had and new notes just like you and I sitting here in the pews today. And I thank God for her life and what she done for me. I thought maybe I could do it from the floor, but they tell me to come up. I felt compelled to come up. Maybe not enough to talk about Jeanette because she was a good friend to me. And I, I, over the past two or three days, I've just been thinking of all of her attributes. All of you here know she was a good friend she was a good friend to many, many people. Mostly everybody sitting here was a good friend. And she had, she was a marvelous musical director. She was a marvelous organist and pianist. And she was just everything that this choir and this church needed during all the years that she directed us and, and um, looked after the music. To the point that many times, we were known as the Singing Church, and it was because of Jeanette. But of all the attributes that I went over, thinking about all the things that she did, the one thing came to my mind is that she was an entertainer. And when you say that word, you think, well, yeah, she did musicals and things, but that's how she entertained publicly. But in her daily, everyday life, Jeanette entertained. She wanted everybody to be having a good day. And I worked with her for many years. And we always knew at the Compensation Commission, if any of you were here, were there, you know this too. If you wanted a little perking up for the day, go to Jeanette's office. She'd have two or three new blossoms on some of her many plants. She might have a new plant. She might have trans. Uh, transplanted a plant in a new pot. She would have a new banner on the wall for whatever team was playing, if it was her football team or her <laughs> tennis coat, tennis person that was winning or losing, she still would root for them. She just was all the time pumped up about whatever was going on in her sport. She was all the time bringing um, just a cheerful little word to whoever walked in her office because she just wanted everybody to be happy. She had a joke to tell. She, she entertained. She entertained everybody that walked into her office. And I know that uh, when we went to nursing homes that everybody talks about, that was a part of her entertainment as well. But, you know, when we went to a mall or when we went to King Square or when we went to the many, many other public places we went to sing. Jeanette never said, now we're going to sing this song. Jeanette said, 
and she would stand up and smile. Now, many of you may not know that in 1847, <laughs> and then she would go on, telling about the man who either made the words for this song or wrote the music or this song or whatever, and she would talk and talk about the history of the song that we were going to sing. By the time we sang it, everybody could hardly wait because she was such an entertainer. And she also, um, she also would entertain the choir. I know that you know most people that go to choir practice would leave, would go to choir at 7 and 8.30 or so, they'd leave and go home. Not if you were in Jeanette's choir. <laughs> We'd be leaving here around 10 because probably we sang for an hour and a half or more but the rest of the time, we were being entertained. Jeanette had a brick, for you who were in the choir. You remember the brick? Big brick. It was made of foam, but it was a brick. And she had all these men that she loved and who all loved her, who mostly have passed since that, those times. And she would say one long note out of that row, and the brick is coming. And very often, it was, it was aimed at a specific man or whatever. She just, she always had a little story to tell, and she could make the story of how she did her laundry that day funny. And we all laughed. We laughed a lot. We prayed a lot. We loved each other. We were a family, and we were all entertained. I just wanted to say, it's just been my privilege to be the recipient of her entertainment. Thank you. Thank you, Wanda. Is there anyone else? Okay. I also felt compelled to come up here today because I wanted to talk about Jeanette for a minute, but mostly on behalf of my mom. Some of you may remember Melly Grant. I'm her oldest daughter, Ellen. And I want to tell you, first of all, that on my, um, in my life, I was raised in this church from a very, very young child. And I remember Jeanette and the choir and the, the Alleluia Chorus. I never, ever forgot of that. And, and every time I thought of Jeanette, I would always think of that wonderful sounds that she produced from that organ. So Mom was an organist as well. She was at Lancaster Baptist for 22 years, and she's been gone almost 17 years now. But the thing that I wanted to share with you today was when Mom first was sick, she was so worried about her church, so worried about the, the music ministry continuing. And without hesitation, Jeanette stood up and said to Mom, don't you worry. Now, she was already retired from here and from her work. She said, don't you worry, I'll look after it. And she did. And Mom never had to give it a second thought because she knew it was in good hands. And she always, always looked up to Jeanette so much for her musical talent and learned so much from Jeanette through the years. And uh, she was a wonderful lady. Thank you. Okay, that works. Hold that. Okay. Okay. I, I'm Colleen Higgs. Um, many of you would have known me as Hobson, and I'm one of many, many kids who Jeanette taught to sing in choir. Um, and uh, I guess this, the thing I just, I mean, there's lots of things you could say, because she taught us all how to sing and how to stand up here and how to not be like shaking. Um, but what I wanted to share, actually, is that our, um, my husband's family is from the backwoods of New Brunswick on the border with Maine, and our neighbors there uh, who come in the summer live in Ontario. But long convoluted story, come to find out that um, that lady lived in St. John for three or four years when she was growing up and came to Hillcrest in the late 70s. And the first thing she says is, I remember, 
I had the best Sunday school teacher ever, Mr. Irving, Irvin, and I remember Jeanette Higgins and the junior choir. And yeah, she just raved. She's that this, she, I don't know, her dad was Navy and, and she was only here for a few years, but that's what I, I'm sure lots of kids who've come through, through Hillcrest have not forgotten Jeanette. And, uh, and yeah, just what she taught us and how she just was interested in everybody and, and cared for all of us. Yeah. Thank you, Colleen and, and Ellen. I didn't recognize you. Good to see you. It's been a while. Yes, yes. Is there anyone else? Oh, oh okay. Come right ahead, Roy. You want the mic down there? You're, you're doing well. <laughs> Yeah, I, w I want, uh, in my, I came to the church originally in 68, and I quite soon joined the choir, and I did sing under Jean Jeanette's choir for quite a few years, but uh, there were two things that, uh, when I heard of Jeanette's passing, two things came to mind. One is my tribute, I'm glad to see that we're going to sing that at the end of the service because when I think of that particular piece and uh, Andre Crouch and his impact on church music at that point in history, that's what, uh, and that was Jeanette's theme song, really. The other thing that uh, hasn't been mentioned and I think is hugely important is Jeanette, the mentor. Kelly? <laughs> Christopher? Uh, oh, Callie? Uh, music leaders are across the country, <laughs> all around here and all around other places, learned to be a music leader from Jeanette. Her impact has been phenomenal. And uh, as Sean said, uh, personally, and uh, Wanda, our years together in choir, and uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Jeanette was, uh, was a, a friend, a prayer warrior, an encourager, an entertainer, and a mentor. Her impact will last eternally. And uh, I'm so thankful that uh, she was part of my life. Thank you, Roy. Anybody else? Well, I have the formal eulogy to give. And some of what I am going to say is a bit of a repeat of what some of these folks have said. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We're gathered here today to celebrate and remember the life of Jeanette Higgins Haynes. I first met Jeanette over 50 years ago in the early days of Hillcrest Baptist Church. Many of you, her family and friends, knew her for a longer period of time than me. So in some ways, I have reservations about delivering this eulogy today because, first of all, if I was to say all that I would like to say based on the life of Jeanette Haynes, we would have to ask the kitchen crew to prepare supper. <laughs> we may yet. <laughs> Secondly, many of you gathered here this morning, especially those who were closely connected to Jeanette in the musical field could deliver the eulogy better than me based on your own personal perspective. You may remember things that Jeanette said and did that I don't know about and or mention today. That's okay. I was asked by her to deliver her eulogy when the time came, and this is the time, and it is a pleasure for me to fulfill that request. It's my prayer that something I say 
will simply add to your precious memories that you will carry with you the rest of your life. Keep in mind, this is a time to remember and celebrate. Jeanette would have it no other way. So here we go. I'm going to describe Jeanette Haynes by attaching a few descriptive words to her. I hope to paint a picture of her life and Christian walk using broad strokes of a brush. Artists often start a picture by blocking in the main shapes on the canvas, then add the details and the highlights later. So as I block in six of the main aspects of Jeanette's life, you can, fi you can fill in your own highlights and, de and details in your minds and hearts as I proceed. Here's the picture I want to paint. Jeanette, a woman of faith. Jeanette, a woman of music. Jeanette, a woman of ministry. Jeanette, a woman of mentorship. Jeanette, a woman of humor. And Jeanette, a woman of organization. First of all, Jeanette, a woman of faith. Jeanette started early in her life as an Anglican. As the years rolled by and she ministered here at Hillcrest and she came under the Baptist umbrella and teaching, she became what I might call Anglo-Baptist. <laughs> she still loved her Anglican roots, but at the same time, her faith remained strong and vital under the Baptist umbrella. That's a great lesson for all of us when we might be tempted to get hung up on denominational differences. Jeanette's faith was solely based on the scriptures which took priority over denominational lines. When Barb and I visited her over the past couple of years as her health deteriorated, it was evident by what she said and shared that her faith remained strong, even though her physical health weakened. She never expressed, even once that I heard, that she was afraid or had doubts about her eternal destiny when the time came for the Lord to call her home. Every reference to her faith was positive. My first brushstroke shows that Jeanette was indeed a woman of faith. Secondly, Jeanette, a woman of music. This one aspect of her life could fill up the remainder of my allotted time. The music ministry was her life. She directed us back in the day when the Hillcrest Choir was about 30 strong, very formal, wearing gowns and mortarboard hats. The music consisted of anthems and the old hymns. As we progressed through the 70s and into the 80s, the style of music changed as worship songs and gather style Christian music came on strong. She introduced us to singing with taped accompaniment. Then there were the many seasonal cantatas, concerts, and outreach musicals that were presented here at Hillcrest and in other venues such as vocational school, often in cooperation with other churches such as Main Street Baptist, Lancaster Baptist, and so forth. And let's not forget her work with what we called back then the Junior Choir. There's a, a portion from an article. I don't know who wrote it, but it was among some of the things that we got uh, that was written about one of these events. And it summarizes much of what I wanted to say about music. Here's what it says. On Thursday evening, March the 2nd, 1971, the combined senior and junior choirs of Hillcrest United Baptist Church presented an entertaining and meaningful concert of sacred music to a large and appreciative audience. Both choirs were under the direction of the church organist, Miss Jeanette Higgins. Mr. Peter Whitehouse provided piano accompaniment for the selections in addition to singing in the tenor section of the choir. Other invited guests assisting the choir in their presentation included Miss Bernadette Melanson as soprano soloist. The article goes on to mention several of the selections presented, which included Joyful Alleluia, Battle Hymn of the Republic, selections by Bach, Handel, and Haydn, The Song of a Singing Heart, Onward Christian Soldiers, and several others. 
In one place, it mentions one of the solos as being our beloved uh, Murray Beasley, whose daughter will be singing for us in a bit. Near the end of the article, it says, the choirs and Miss Higgins are to be congratulated on providing a fine evening of entertainment as well as a very timely message in song. This was evident uh, from, the, from the standing ovation received at the close of the concert. I would be remiss if I did not include the many music workshops that she attended over the years. Jeanette was always ready and willing to learn about the latest trends in Christian music that would enhance the overall music ministry of the church. She attended conferences in such far-flung places as Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario, Dallas, Texas, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Portland, Oregon, Kansas City, Missouri, and her all-time favorite, Estes Park, Colorado. She attended that workshop several times and often referred to it in casual conversation. Jeanette also conducted a number of her own workshops in the city and organized many weekend um, sessions for her Hillcrest Choir. What more can I say about Jeanette, a woman of music? One of her greatest joys was to take an assortment of choir members to several of the nursing homes throughout the city and provide spiritual comfort to the residents through the Ministry of Music. Over the years, her other involvements included accompanying the Carradine Choir and also a member of the Tom Hahn Singers and the New Brunswick Opera Company. Even after her retirement from Hillcrest Baptist, Jeanette continued her musical ministry by supplying at several other churches in St. John and surrounding area. Her interest in great music never waned, evidenced by her frequent outings to the Imperial with her good friend Sue O'Brien to enjoy performances there. Much more could be said, no doubt, but this is a broad stroke. This should serve to show that Jeanette was indeed a woman of music. But Jeanette was also a, uh, also a woman of ministry. Jeanette was always very much concerned about the ministry aspects of our Christian walk. She would carefully and sometimes laboriously select just the right music to go along with every sermon topic. It wasn't always easy to find just the right match. When she took groups to minister in nursing homes, she would also include some form of reading or devotional to help bolster the residents' spirits. Jeanette was genuinely concerned about the spiritual well-being of people right up to, the, up to her passing. In many ways, she was a traditionalist in regards to worship and ministry styles, but at the same time was willing to embrace new ideas that had value and meaning. I remember going with her on one occasion many years ago to check out a church outside the city where some interesting new initiatives were happening. If my memory serves me correctly, I believe she was one of the first persons I heard utter the, utter the statement, worship is not about us, it's about God. That message has resonated with many of us throughout the intervening years. Jeanette was also on the cutting, aid, on the cutting edge, along with Vida Maxwell, when they were accepted as the first two female deacons at Hillcrest Baptist. Together, they uh, prepared the way for many other female deacons that have given excellent service down through the years. Truly a milestone in the life of this church. Jeanette was indeed a woman of ministry. Fourth, Jeanette, a woman of mentorship. Roy has already referred to that. Um, in this broad stroke of the brush, I want to paint Jeanette as a mentor to many. Now, firstly, her work over the years with the junior choirs was a type of mentorship. Only God knows how many young people she influenced over those many years to live better lives and love and appreciate music. She set an example and encouraged two that I know of specifically. Now I know of three. There's Christopher Lane over here. Kelly Galbraith down there, and our Callie Cobham, and who knows how many others, but they're here today, and that's a good thing. That speaks for itself. 
Both Christopher and, uh, and Kelly have gone on to become wonderful musicians, singers, and choir directors. But she didn't only mentor young people. Just being in her choir and enjoying all the fun and seriousness of hundreds of, their, of choir practices was a form of mentorship to adults because all of us had something to learn. Sometimes the learning curve was steep, and sometimes we might go into a service feeling that we weren't completely prepared, but the Lord and Jeanette would get us through. One of our choir members, Wayne Moore, would often jokingly say to Jeanette during a practice, we don't want to peak too soon. <laughs> Amazingly, these selections we were, that we did that we were a bit unsure of would often turn out to be our best work for that occasion. Jeanette was a woman of mentorship. Fifth, Jeanette, a woman of humor. Now we all perceive humor in our own way. Jeanette had her own brand. Sometimes it was the styrofoam uh, brick flying through the air at somebody during choir practice or her response to, now I don't know how many of you some of you do, of course. Remember Donnie Perry. He was in our choir. He was quite a character on his own right. Donnie would come in and he would say, And what are we doing this evening, Miss Higgins? <laughs> that question always elicited a suitable comeback. <laughs> or when Jeanette would mess up on something and she would say, Don't worry, I'll be okay, I'll be okay. No matter the situation, there was always a twinkle in her eye. Even during our staff visit at Bobby's Hope just four days before her passing, she had a couple of neat responses to something somebody said. One of the best examples of her humor for me personally was during three trips that Barb and I took with Jeanette and Bev to visit Pastor Bill Powell and Ellen in East Rochester, New Hampshire. They had become very close to Pastor Bill and Ellen and their family because they often played badminton together and on a weekly basis, and of course Bill and Jeanette cooperated in ministry. Bev and Jeanette would often kibitz back and forth about something, and it was usually quite amusing, or I thought it was. <laughs> I don't remember specific things they said, but at the, at the time, it was amusing. At the same time, I knew it was done in love. In those days, Bev could spoke poetry at any given moment. We might be sitting around the table having a meal at the Pals, and Bev would start reciting poetry, some long poem that he knew right off by heart. Jeanette would roll her eyes and make a cryptic comment. This would usually cause Bev to pick up steam, and onward he would go. It was great fun. Then coming back from one of the trips, I was, dri I was driving Bev's car. I always drove on these trips, by the way. <laughs> I kind of made that clear at the beginning. <laughs> You can take that as I, you wish. <laughs> but uh, uh, then coming back from one of the trips, I was driving Bev's car, and we started hearing strange noises coming from the back of the car. By the time we got to Bangor, it was really bad. Bev was all for keeping on to St. John. Oh, we'll get home, we'll get home, he said. Jeanette wasn't so sure. Barb wasn't so sure. I was driving, so I made an executive decision and headed for the Ford dealership. Well, the left rear wheel had lost three wheel nuts. Only two were keeping the wheel in place. The mechanic said we were lucky they didn't come off. We could have all been killed. Two hours and $800 later, we were back on the road. A new tire, new wheel, and some work on something behind the wheel. Apparently, Bev had some tire work done before the trip, and the wheels didn't get torqued up properly. Throughout all this, Jeanette maintained a positive outlook with a twinkle in her eye and lots of comments, 
Bev not so much. <laughs> and over the years since, we often laughed about that adventure. One more thing about Jeanette was that she loved to eat out. The Island Girls, Swiss Chalet, wherever, she loved to eat out. And we were out with her a number of times in the last months when she was able to go. Even when she couldn't taste well, she would go and we'd have a good time. Jeanette was indeed a woman of humor. The last brush stroke I want to make is this, Jeanette a woman of organization. Now this stroke of the brush will really be a broad stroke. Jeanette was one who kept stuff. Bulletins, cards, letters, pictures, programs, music, magazines, papers, clippings, calendars, etc. You name it and Jeanette probably had it. I believe if you had asked Jeanette what happened on a given Sunday in May 1976, she could have dug through her stuff and found the bulletin for that day. I don't think she threw anything away. I said she was a woman of organization, perhaps not in the normal meaning of the word, but give her time and she would find it. She was also very generous with her stuff. During the latter part of her life, she came up with bags of stuff she thought others might like to have. We received a few bags of papers, magazines, etc. By the way, there's a display out in the gym that you can look at. That's some of the stuff that we, we got. I delivered several bags of treasures to people in our congregation. Some bags of stuff even went as far south as Columbia, South Carolina to the Powells. If Jeanette thought it was of value, somebody should have it. She also loved to order Christian books by mail, and she didn't keep all of them. She shared them around to people she thought would benefit from them. I received a few over the years, and I know these gentlemen back here did as well. Jeanette was also one who made notes, copious notes. During her last days, she wrote down exactly what she wanted, and she knew what she wanted. We typed out her obituary for her. She made revisions. We retyped it again. I'm not sure if there was a third time or not. I forget, but it had to be just so and we were glad to do it. She knew what she wanted and the way things should work themselves out. So there you have it, there you have it. A painting of the life of Jeanette Higgins Haynes, done with large strokes of the brush. Six aspects of her life have been blocked in. Now everyone here can add your own details and your own highlights to finish that painting. It will be a portrait of Jeanette you can carry with you for the remainder of your days. So Jeanette, we're not saying goodbye, we're saying so long for now. We haven't lost you, we know where you are, but we can't get to you right now. My prayer is that all of us, your friends and family, will be, will all meet together in heaven one day. We will all sing in the heavenly choir, and you will probably be directing it. I will conclude with the words from Matthew 25, 23. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. We can apply that to Jeanette. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. I believe that is what Jeanette Catherine Higgins Haynes is doing right now. I'm going to welcome Wendy to sing a special for us. I'm sure her dad was the recipient of a few of those foam bricks from time to time. <laughs> yes, indeed. Jeanette was, was a mentor. She was a mentor to myself. Um, she was also a good friend. I got to go on one of the Estes Colorado trips with her, and it was totally amazing. We roomed together, and my highlight, one of my highlights of Estes that I remember is there were three of us in the room, her friend Shirley Doman, who was a fairly large girl, so she got the double bed, and Jeanette and myself, and we got the bunk bed. And of course, Jeanette being 
a little more elderly than myself. She got the bottom bunk, and I got the top bunk. There was no ladder to get up on the top bunk. It was quite an ordeal. I was about 35, 36 at the time, and Shirley and Jeanette would throw pennies as I was the nighttime entertainment. <laughs> She called me up in August and asked me if I would, would sing at her funeral, and what a privilege it is to be in doing that. She had a couple of songs, and the one she really wanted was the one I'm going to do. It's called We Shall Behold Him. But she wasn't quite sure that it was appropriate for a funeral. So I said, Jeanette, of course it is. We are all looking forward to beholding our Lord Jesus Christ face to face. And when I sing this, you will be there beholding him face to face. And so I sing this for Jeanette today. The sky shall unfold Sleeping shall rise. 
cannot wait, can we, to get to see him face to face. And you, Jeanette, you're there now. Amen. I won't sing, don't worry. <laughs> My goodness, the impact that uh, Jeanette has had on, on us all. Why don't we go to prayer for a moment? Just ask God's encouragement on our hearts right now. God, thank you so much. You have blessed us and blessed us and blessed us over and over and over again with Jeanette's life. So God, we who are her friends and her family today, we thank you for the encouragement from the words that we've heard spoken, from the songs that have been sung, and yet, Lord, we know there's more songs coming. Lord, let your spirit rest upon us and comfort us. Give us courage today. I pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Well, in typical Jeanette fashion, she told me what I'm preaching on. <laughs> So she said Psalm 119 has to be, no, not 119. We're going to look at Psalm 139, and, and there's been a lot said, so I, I don't intend to take too long, but there's just some beautiful things in Psalm 139, because I find there's things that give you hope, and then there's the word of God that we stand on, that firm foundation that gives us that almost physical hope that we can latch on to and bite into. So in Psalm 139, I'm going to just kind of read through it and I'll make a couple little comments on it. It says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. Mm -mm -mm. You know when I sit and when I rise and when I'm going to throw foam bricks. You perceive my thoughts from afar and you discern my going out, my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely and because you know me, you know what I'm about to do. That's not in the scriptures, but have you ever been a part of Jeanette's plans? <laughs> well, it's like a well-ordered battle plan. Every step of the way was thought out and lined out and organized just so. I mean, she put the organ and organized, right? She went ahead in all her plans, knowing that God was with her and knew her and knowing that, well, like it says in verse 5, you hem me in behind and before me. And you lay your hand upon me, and such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. She went forward in all her battle plans, knowing that God was going to step along beside her, send her angels round about her. I mean, her, her guardian angels probably like, phew, finally you got a break. <laughs> She was known by God and she was protected by God. It's amazing love and it's amazing grace. God's hand was surely on Jeanette. Her God breathed passion for people, for praise, for music, for his church, for traveling with K. Joe. She was amazed by God and the wonderful workings of his mighty hand through her and in her and those she invested in, and those she loved. Though I never made her daily phone call list, I don't know what I did wrong there, but. <laughs> Scripture goes on to say, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence if I go up to the heavens? You're there. She knows that better now than ever. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise in the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me and your right hand will surely hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness in our dark moment even now is as light to you. Let his face shine upon you. Where else can we go? You know, God has not deserted us. He has not deserted Jeanette. He's, he's doesn't matter if you live or if you die. His right hand will hold you fast. 
Like John 14 says, now I want to be with you and I want you to be where I am so we can be together. It's, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's a tragedy on our end, but it's the culmination, it's the peak of our faith that Jeanette is with her Lord and Savior. You know, I can remember talking with Jeanette and she's like even, even laying down or talking on the phone, she was tired, but she still had so much she wanted to do. She still had so much that she wanted to do. And I think of uh, Stephen Ring, he was preaching on Psalm 23. It says, he maketh me to lie down. It's like, okay, Jeanette, enough's enough. You've got enough rewards in heaven. We're running out of rewards. It's time for you to lay down. Lay down your burdens. Lay down your ministries. It's okay. You have worked hard and wonderfully and made my name famous. It's time to lie down. And I love how as she came to her, her closing moments, she just got sleepier and sleepier. I think that was God causing her to lie down. You've done enough. I mean, if God gave her another 20 years, she would have been like all over it every day. And, you know, God's probably like, okay, there's some other people who need to step up here. <laughs> Give them a chance. Uh, you know, I, I feel, I was sharing with, with, uh, with Kelly this, this morning just for a second. Uh, I really feel that there's a baton that's being passed. And I'm not saying that to other busy people. You know, there's lots of people that are busy. You get a lot on your plate, Kelly. I mean, there's lots of people. But I feel that there's a ministry to our seniors and our shut-ins. And I feel there's a ministry baton that's being left. I mean, Eric can't do it all by himself. He'd like to. <laughs> and Dorothy wouldn't let him. We need to come alongside this ministry. There's a real ministry gap in that, in that age range right now. And so maybe tomorrow, this morning, you're, you're, you're feeling his presence pull on your heart and say, you know what? I need to step up. You know, you can talk to Eric. You can talk to me. We're going to be strategizing and thinking about how do we as a community love our seniors, love our seniors' homes, love our shut-ins better than we have? Because she was standing in the gap. And now it's up to us to stand up. And I pray your hearts would be stirred by that this morning. Maybe you're like, oh, my time has passed. My gifts are on the shelf. Well, you know what? It's time to take your gifts back off the shelf and be like Jeanette. Say, well, Lord, you haven't caused me to lie down yet. Don't say, my gifts aren't as good as they used to be. Say, this is my gift, just like at the very beginning, Lord. Take it and take me as I am and use me as I am with my gift the way it is. And let me make your name famous and help me to love these people. So if that's you this morning, take your gift off the shelf. Let's go and love like Jeanette loved. I like it goes on to say in verse 13, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I love that image. Just intentionally being pieced together. You know, he's piecing Jeanette together. I thought, ooh, there's a Christopher. There's a, there's a, a Jennifer. There's a, there's a George and a Lorne. And there's a Bruce. And I, they're in need of Jeanette. So let's piece together Jeanette. Right? And there's a Sandra, and she's got this voice, and she needs someone who's going to push her. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together for such a people in such a time as this. Your eyes saw my unformed body, and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them ever came to be. You know, he designed Jeanette perfectly. You know, he put a little something extra special in Jeanette, didn't he? A twinkle in her eye when she'd tell a joke. You know, her passion just overflowed. You know, we have a senior service here and she helped us organize that and we'd come to the meeting and she'd have it all laid out for us and tell us what we're doing. It's great. You know, her stubbornness. That was just part of who she was. We loved it. I called it her whirlwindedness. Wanda told me sometimes she'd go into her, to her office at the, at the, not the commissioner, I can't remember where the office she worked, the compensation board. She'd walk in and there'd be all this music stuff for Hillcrest everywhere and Wanda's like, where's your work work? Oh yeah, can you help me with this Wanda? And <laughs> whirlwindedness. She was a true gift from God. I'm so thankful for having the opportunity to ministry to minister with her, to share ministry with her, to see her heart and her love for people, to be influenced by her. You see, God created us uniquely 
to serve and love others, to be his agents of reconciliation, to be bearers of his light and love to the world. It's in your DNA too, both spiritually and physically. Verse 17 says, How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake, I'm still with you. When I awake, you know, this time when Jeanette woke up, she was face to face with her Savior. She's face to face with Bev, her mom, her dad, her brother, Murray and Dot, Vida, Bev, Jim Ogles, all those guys and gals from the Sunshine Club. What a way to wake up! Scripture says His mercies are new every morning. There's no better morning than that morning. I mean, I know Bev, he, I, I was looking over my notes from, from Bev's funeral, and I remember it was the longest courtship on the west side of St. John ever to be recorded. <laughs> and here he had to wait another few years to see Jeanette again. I was like, well, he must be used to it by now, I guess. <laughs> what a way to wake up. What a way to wake up. Scripture says, in, in closing, it says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, anxious thoughts, you know, I'm sure we have some, but John 14 says, Don't be anxious. I have her. And you're not getting her back because she's mine now. <laughs> Put your anxious thoughts to rest. She is with her Savior, Jesus Christ, and those who have gone before her. She was led in the way everlasting, as we should be, and now is spending eternity, likely leading heavenly choirs and throwing thick foam bricks at angels, and they redeemed alike, who attend her heavenly practices. With that, I'd like to invite Christopher Lane to uh, have a solo for us. Uh, a man who's been influenced by Jeanette as well.
Christopher has uh, Jeanette's hymn book uh, copy right there on the piano. And uh, we're going to have a, a closing congregational hymn. And if you please stand with me, number 365, My Tribute. before we come to a conclusion is the reception is to follow the service and the graveside committee will be tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. So you can go through either one of those doors. It will take you to the reception hall. But allow me to pray a blessing benediction over us as we finish here. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of your victory and claiming your promises, Lord, we entrust Jeanette to your mercy. Lord, support us who remain all the day long of this turbulent life. Until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done and you cause us to lie down. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last. Amen. Amen.